Friday is Game of Homies, your boy Blast Miss H. Dizzle. A lot of you guys have been hitting me up because for some reason you guys want to hear more stories about smoke. I don't know what it is that's so attractive about crazy sociopathic f***ing bullies and sh <laughs> The dude honestly looks like Debo from Friday, bald and buff and everything. We just did not have a lazy eye. This story is basically two stories in one. You're welcome. But what I'm gonna need you to do before I tell this story is to hit that like button. It helps give my stories exposure so other motherfuckers can see the f up situations I be getting myself into and or have seen. And just like the title said, this story is f <laughs> Oh, this story is fun. Okay, Smoke was the name of basically the biggest, toughest, craziest sociopathic bully in that school, man. Teachers were scared of him, everyone else was scared of him. He was the head of his own gang called the Socias. Yes, I've read the book, what the f is it called again? Um, The Outsiders. I used to love that book as a kid. I don't know why he named this gang after the same gang in that book, because the dude doesn't pass me as a person who reads that f much. This guy sold drugs, shot at people. You name the type of crime, and this dude had his finger in it some way, shape, and or form. You know how most people's parents always tell them, don't do the stuff that I did. You go to school, get a good education, get a good job. He didn't even have that sh his parents were well-known drug dealers and gangbangers too, and they condoned the shit. You would think that anyone who would be in that rough of a lifestyle as to where is they're putting their life online on a daily basis would want their kid to do the same But they was down! Like, I remember walking past this guy's smoke's house. His whole entire front yard consisted of nothing but weights. Him and his gang would just sit in front of the house all day lifting f***ing weights. Every once in a while you would see his dad come out and do a couple bench presses and squats with him and whatnot. You know, but that's all they did was get into fights at school, sell drugs, get in the gang fights after school, and lift weights in front of their house. That's legitimately all I ever knew Smoke for doing. Now, there was this really pretty chick that used to go to that school. I forgot her name. We're going to call her Crystal. This chick was half Puerto Rican, half black. She was bad as f for a 15-year-old. <laughs> Oh, no pedophile. And everyone in the school had a crush on this chick. What stopped everybody from hollering, including me, was the fact that this chick, Crystal, had a boyfriend. But her boyfriend did not go to that school. But for some reason, this dude was super f***ing popular. Even though the dude was never freaking around Thomas Jefferson, I still remember his name to this day. That's how popular this dude was. His name was Chris. You guys ever run into that person who's just super charismatic with everybody? Like, he was friends with all the gangbangers. The women loved him. And he was friends with all the nerds. Like, the dude was mad cool. Now, the thing that kept everyone from hollering at his girl was the fact that he was also in a gang. I do not remember what the gang was. I'm not just going to cop out and say it was a Latin Kings, because they were huge in Cleveland, Ohio at the time. I don't think it was a Latin Kings, but the dude was Puerto Rican. Now, as we all know, Smoke has a super big head, because he's intimidating everybody at the school. Hell, even the teachers let this dude have his way and don't say sh** back when he does jack them. He's the only dude I know at Thomas Jefferson that could get into fights every single fight day and never be suspended because even if they told him he couldn't come to school he still walked up in that bitch and went and lifted weights in gym because the gym teacher and the principal weren't gonna tell him not to come in there because they were scared shitless of the dude now on that day in particular smoke decides to holler at crystal right and when crystal respectfully declines of course smoke being the gangbanger that he is decides to get off thug and gangster and you ain't shit. I f 
fuck you up. It's blah blah blah, starts threatening her and shit. Of course, she's like, oh yeah, for real? Well, I'ma call my boyfriend and tell him what you're saying. He ain't gonna be too happy about the shit that you're talking. Of course, Smoke is like, man, fuck your boyfriend. He ain't gonna do shit. Blah blah blah. I was there when this argument took place. Fast forward about four more hours into the day. School is letting out, man. I'm walking out with Crystal. As I'm getting outside the front gates, I see a big ass crowd forming up. They used to have a lot of pop locking and break dancing battles at Thomas Stefan because everyone can fucking dance. Or B, it's a big ass fucking fight. Either which case, I'm not gonna miss either which one of these motherfuckers. So I dash over to where everybody's running to, only to see this. Massive crowd of people, and it's not just one of those tight knit circles, you know what I mean? Like when you know it's a fight, and it's just a bunch of people in a big circle. These people have the whole fucking street blocked off. Like this is that monumental of a fucking event. I push my way through the crowd, only to see in the middle, it's Chris, Rondrell, Smoke, and Smoke's older fuck. Brother. Now, Smoke's older brother was bigger than Smoke. The motherfucker was buffer than Smoke. But the thing was, his older brother was a really, really good football player. The dude was so dedicated to football, I would not put it past him to be in the NFL right now. I, I just haven't followed up with the guy. But with that being said, because of all of his football training, he's not into everything that his family is into. He doesn't do drugs, he doesn't sell drugs. He just goes to school and practices football and lifts weights all f***ing day. Just football and lift weights. But he was there to have his brother's back. So on the other side was only fucking Chris. Just fucking Chris. Now the thing about Chris was Chris was a skinny motherfucker. Like the dude was skinny as f***. He's Puerto Rican, curly hair, but he was tall. He was lanky. He's like six foot three, which is pretty big for a. F 17 year old, you know what I mean? A lot of you may be asking, why is this one guy, Chris, going against basically all the toughest motherfuckers in the social game, right? Now, the thing about Chris is, since he was so fucking skinny, he has been getting into fights his whole fucking life. He's always lived in the hood, and the dude had heart like a motherfucker. He did not give a fuck. I've seen a couple of situations with Chris where this motherfucker was willing to die. Legitimately, there's a it's a different BHD story time, but I saw this guy get into a knife fight with another guy after school, and Chris didn't have a knife. Only the other dude did, and he still f***ing won the f fight, man. After that, dog, I'm not gonna lie, I was scared of Chris. That's why I didn't hit him as girl. I was not about the life of f***ing with his. Sh <laughs> that dude was such a badass. <laughs> so. So, Chris, man, I have never seen this dude back down from shit. I'm pretty sure in that night fight situation, the dude could have had a gun. And Chris still would have tried to throw hands on him, even though he didn't have a weapon. That's how crazy this motherfucker was, man. He was the embodiment of fucking yellow. He was the model. <laughs> oh, every day. So, I haven't told you guys a lot about Rondrell. Rondrell was like, second in command of the socials. The thing with Ron Drill was, he was short, right? He was like my size in height, but he was skinny as a fucking twig. The thing about Ron Drill was, he was 100% YOLO too. He was YOLO in the sense as to where if you tried to fight him and he felt like he was gonna lose, he would just plain shoot you. Just, just straight up fucking murder you. It was cool, he would just straight kill you. He, this dude always drove a fucking stolen car. He sold drugs and he was just the most unethical drug dealer I've ever met in my goddamn life. <laughs> Wait till I tell you some of the stories about this motherfucker. <laughs> He's such a terrible person. <laughs> He's such a terrible drug dealer. Now, this dude Ron Drell, he had a big fucking mouth, right? And he was willing to get down. Smoke's group starts walking towards Chris. Chris starts walking towards Smoke's group. And no one's fucking saying shit. No words was exchanged. Usually there's a whole bunch of yelling and screaming and some shit. There was none of that. Motherfuckers is just walking at each other. And I'm like, shit. And this is about to go down. Nigga, we need popcorn and lawn chairs. Because shit's about to get real as fuck. <laughs> so, the first person up is Ron Drell. 
Ron Drill runs at f***ing Chris as they connect. Chris hits this nigga so hard. I can't put into words how hard he got. Have you ever seen someone get hit so hard that, that their f***ing face and neck spin so fast that their body doesn't have a chance to like spin the same way? All you hear is da 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 the punch was so devastating, that's the only way I can describe it. It's legitimately like, da 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 That is the fucking sound of it. Rondrell is not clean out, which honestly was the best thing for him. You know what I mean? If it would have been a long standing fight, he would have ended up getting really fucked up. But Rondrell is just face down on the fucking pavement, blood coming out his nose, just done. He's not clean out. One hit. Smoke breaks from the pack and runs up on freaking Chris, man. And then throwing hand. Now, I will say this. Smoke being the type of bully who relies solely on intimidation. He had some fighting ability. Like, he wasn't really that bad. But Chris just outclassed him so fucking bad, man. Oh, my God. But the thing was, like, like Smoke got did so bad that I honestly believe the only thing keeping him up on his feet was the fact that everybody from his school was there watching. Smoke's girlfriend was there, Chris's girlfriend was there, 80% of the kids that were at Thomas Jefferson was out there watching this goddamn fight so Smoke couldn't lose because in a way everything that Smoke had put into his name and his reputation was staked on that goddamn fight because you cannot lose to just one fucking person and you're the leader of the game. Man, Chris fucked him up so bad, man. The punches were being thrown so fast, I just couldn't put my finger on it as to why so many of Smoke's punches were missing and why like 90% of Chris's were landing right on the freaking money. It was just so fucking brutal, man. By the end of the fight, Smoke, his fucking face was just lumped and blood just, just fucking pouring out of one of his fucking eyes. Face is all fucking lumped up. Both his fucking lips are busted. His shirt is just covered in his own fucking blood. Now his brother tried to fight Chris. I don't know why, but their fight was nowhere near as drastic. The minute Smoke's brother started getting beat up, he just got quit and he just fell back to helping Smoke because Smoke needed to give everything he had just to stay on his fucking feet. His brother's holding him up and Smoke is just fucking putty. Every other word Smoke is yelling at fucking Chris about how he's gonna kill him and fuck him up and shoot him. You can't even make the shit out. It was that bad. Now Chris's shirt is ripped. You know, you would think that Chris had transformed into a incredible heart. That's how much in tatters Chris's shirt was, but it was because when he was fighting Smoke, halfway through their exchange of fist, Smoke kind of understood that he wasn't going to be able to fist fight this guy, and just started grabbing at his shirt, you know, and whenever he would get his hands on him, Chris would rock him with two of them, blah, 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 blah. and fucking Smoke would fall, get back up, and try to grab him again, blah, 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 just to get rocked in the face and end up right back on the fucking tape. Chris is talking big shit. Cause even though Chris was super cool and charismatic, he had a real bad temper. He's like, oh, fuck that shit, fuck that shit, I'll fuck y'all up, fuck that shit, your game is so Yo, all a bunch of men, don't you ever try to fuck me. Smoke takes this to heart, as he should, breaks off of his brother and makes one last ditch attempt to try to fuck Chris up. He runs up on him and just gets dead. Like, he got hit so hard that his face, his chin and his neck exploded up and backwards, but his body still leaning forward because he was putting everything he had into that punch, all of it fell forward and he falls face first on the pavement, not clean out. And Chris walks off down the fucking street yelling about how the socials are all bitches and they couldn't fuck with him. A gang is only as strong as the strength that they see in their leader. You know, like morale and all that shit. If the gang thinks its leader is a bitch, then the whole gang is literally worth nothing. Smoke apparently knowing this, and if not being able to articulate why this was the case, he at least felt that it was. Because after that, Smoke was a completely different person. I say that because he did not come to school 
for three weeks. We did not see smoke. We didn't hear about smoke for three fucking weeks after that. We didn't think anything of it. We just figured, okay, well, he's done with school. He's not going to come back. Crystal was still at the school, so I still kicked it with her. Chris would come and pick her up at the end of the day because, you know, he had a car and shit. Everything seemed fucking cool until one day we were all inside of social studies. Now, I forgot this teacher's name, but he was fucking hilarious because he would make these awful jokes and no one would laugh. <laughs> and since all of us students just basically thought this dude was 100% bitch man, because he was, <laughs> no one respected him in his fucking classroom. Like, whenever he would turn his back, people would ball up paper and spit wads and just throw them at him, right? So halfway through the school year, he just decided to give us free time every day, all fucking day, for the duration of his fucking class period, because he was just done with dealing with us. We would have boom boxes in this class we would just dance and share stories and be stupid it was the most awesome fucking class ever it was so fucking cool and he would just sit at his desk and read like he didn't give a fuck. he didn't give no fucks. he came to work to collect a check <laughs> he's like man fuck all you student bitches on this particular day it's like me and two of my homies we're sitting down, we're just having a casual conversation. Me, my chair is facing the windows as I'm talking to the homie, Mark. As this conversation keeps going on, I notice something moving out of my peripheral vision super fast outside the window. I look to see, it's like three or four freaking kids running across the damn line. First thought is, oh, okay, well, you know, this isn't that out of the ordinary. It was Thomas Jefferson, he skipped school. But as the conversation persists, I notice more and more and more kids in bigger groups are running across the freaking lawn. So I open up the freaking window and I look out to see people are jumping out of the first and second story freaking windows and running away from the freaking school. This being as out of the ordinary of an occurrence as it was, I didn't really know how to react. So I'm just sitting there looking like, what the f is this? Like, like is the ice cream truck here or some sh Cause <laughs> if so, let me get a Rambo bomb pop and a couple of bags of hot Cheetos and some M&Ms, you know, the yellow bag with no peanuts, you know what I mean? And then I hear over the PA, uh, for unforeseen reasons, the rest of school today is canceled and there will be no school tomorrow or the next day until Monday. And of course me, I'm like, oh sh yeah, but something was still super uneasy about the way all of these kids were clamoring over each other to get out of these freaking windows. Now, I can understand the first story, but the second story? Like, who would risk breaking both their freaking legs? Because the second story window was pretty high up. Just so they could get out of school a couple of minutes faster. This shit didn't make no freaking sense. I jumped out the window too. It was only, I was on the first story, so it wasn't that big of a deal. I run home and I tell my mom what happened and she's like, huh. She calls down to the school, and the principal tells her, oh, no, you know, a situation happened. You know, we have it under control. It's not a big deal, but school's canceled until Monday. So mom tells me this, and I'm like, huh? Well, okay, shit. Four-day weekend up in this bitch. Fuck it. So I go back to school on Monday. There's this weird chatter around school. Everyone was trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. I run into one of the security guards in the basement, who I had somehow cultivated friendship with. And I asked him, I'm like, hey, man, you know what? What's freaking going on, man? Like, why did we have that four-day weekend? Apparently, from what the fucking security guard told me... Now, in Thomas Jefferson, there was a basement, right? It was a really, really, really big basement. There was like seven or eight classes down there. Now, because there was so many classes down there, they had lockers down there as well for the students whose main classes usually ended up in the basement. Apparently, that Wednesday that we had all gotten sent home early from school, some security guards caught... Ron Drell, Smoke, and some of the other key members of the Source Gang assembling semi-automatic guns outside of their fucking lockers in the goddamn basement. Apparently, what was gonna go down was Smoke was so pissed off after him and his other Source members getting their ass handed to him by one other fucking guy that they were gonna fucking shoot the goddamn school up. 
The only real targets that I know of was Chris and his girlfriend. And of course, Chris was coming after school to pick his fucking girlfriend up. Now, I don't know if they were gonna just go around and fucking, you know, and shoot all of us regular fucking kids, but I'm glad we never had to fucking figure that shit out, man. I can't remember ever seeing Smoke again after that shit. I didn't see Rondrell for like five years after that shit. I don't know if they went to jail. I don't know what happened to him. I don't know where they went. They just fell off the fucking grid. I don't know what happened to him. I don't know if they went to jail. I don't know if they moved. I know they were never allowed in that fucking school again. Any other questions you guys have for me, man, post in the comments down below. Any advice you guys want me to give you on future advice times, anything like that. You know, I hope you guys enjoyed the story. If you did, make sure to make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.